Hey guys, how's it going? Justin Melson here with Happy Fox Productions, and today we're gonna to be looking at a couple of tips and tricks that I like to do on how to make your footage stand out a little bit more than other footage. Not that it is a competition, but I mean, you want your footage to stand out. So this is kind of what I do, just a couple simple tricks on how to do it. So with that said, for I guess a quick overview of this tutorial, just so you know if you wanna watch it or not, is I'm gonna be showing you guys how I debare my footage inside of DaVinci Resolve, how I put it inside of Premiere, how do I prep it, and then we So the whole purpose of this tutorial is to show you guys how I made this shot of my good friend Alicia, how I made her look like this, and transform the footage to look like this. Now I know it looks like just some, uh, some simple color grading going on, but there's a lot more going on in this shot to kind of get it to look angelic and like this versus this. As an example of that, you could easily throw on a LUT or an adjustment layer, do a quick Lumetri color correction, and make it look something like this. Obviously, this shot looks nice. This is shot on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K, uh, 3 to 1 raw at 60 frames a second. Obviously, the color looks good. Her skin tones look good. Um, it all just looks pleasant compared to this raw shot. That looks good, but you know what looks better is that, in my opinion. So I'm going to show you guys how we did that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to DaVinci Resolve. Now, like I said before, we shot this on, or I shot this on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K in RAW. So first thing we gotta do is debare that and kind of get it to an editable codec. So what we're gonna do is I wanna transcode this into a DNxHR uh, codec, which is inside of a QuickTime wrapper. So essentially what that means is we're gonna encode it to QuickTime using DNxHR. Why DNxHR? Because uh, my Resolve doesn't encode to ProRes and we're not doing H.264, H.265 or anything like that obviously, so we're gonna do DNxHR. So I'm gonna do decode using clip because this is just the log shot right now. And the good thing about shooting raw is all the flexibility that we have. I don't need to go into all that. Most of you guys know the benefits of shooting raw. So for example, this looks blown out. If we can look on our uh, scopes on the waveform, it's definitely blown out. But if we bring the exposure down, we are getting that information back. Obviously it's not too usable because she's completely black, but we're getting that cloud information back. Now, obviously we want to white balance this to cloudy. Um, you know, all this looks good. Obviously ISO 800. We don't want to do Rec 709 because here's why. Really, really nice looking. So this looks good. So sim simply what we're going to do is go to the deliver tab and we are just going to tell DaVinci, yo man, we just want to render this clip, this only clip, time DNxHR, um, and that is my cat. And so uh, you could render this in various different flavors of DNxHR. Uh, for me, I obviously want to keep it 12-bit because I want all the color information that we can get. So I'm going to go on ahead and do just do the highest quality possible, DNxHR 444 12-bit, run constant bitrate. And I like to do full data levels because for some reason when I leave it on auto and video, I kind of get like a, sh a gamma shift. Um, specifically out of Resolve, it does that. Don't know why. Wish I knew, but I don't. Of course, you buried the highest quality. Uh, I'm assuming it just makes it better because it's kind of like the use maximum render quality inside of Premiere. I don't know what it does, but I feel good when I click it. So I click that and everything else is good. Add that to render queue and export that and then you'll be all good. Put that inside of Premiere and then inside of Premiere, here is the raw shot that we're going to be editing inside of After Effects. And you just go ahead and right click that and do a replace with After Effects composition. So first thing I did is I went on ahead and did the aspect ratio that I wanted. This is a 240 to one aspect ratio. So I believe if you do the math, that's 4608 uh, by 1920. Yes, by 1920. And that all looks good. So, and this is just like a, uh, a pet peeve that uh, this particular, my friend Alicia, she doesn't like her forehead too much. So it's just like a thing, I crop that out. And that's all good. So the next thing that you go on ahead and do is you add Twixter Pro. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, so that looks cool. It's like a slow motion lookup, but it's not completely what we want because we want her to open her eyes and then it's just completely slow motion. Like, uh, like we're shooting on a phantom camera or something cool like that. And so there are ways you can do that using time, uh, interpolation, or you can go to frame blending, do pixel motion, and then you can go in time, uh, enable time remapping and kind of do it and use the graph editor and do it that way. Will the results be amazing? I can't say they'll be amazing, but there are ways to kind of get around this using After Effects' built-in uh, you know, time remap feature. But I have Twixter Pro, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. So I guess you'll be getting a little bit of a Twixter Pro tutorial in this tutorial, so it's tutorialception right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna change the input frame rate to 24 frames a second. And this use GPU button, we're gonna do on if supported CPU, otherwise that just, you know, 
Uh, I have a GDX 980 Ti, so it'll just kind of help speed things up a little bit. Um, input fields, this is progressive, so we don't need to do anything with that. Motion vectors, best. Get out of there. Image prep, none. Speed, we'll get to that in a second. Blend, I like to do motion weighted blend. And warping, I like to do inverse with smart blend. Why do I do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like to act like uh, I know what I'm doing, but I don't. I just kind of mess with this stuff until I get what I like. So uh, here's the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do speed percentage. So we're going to start it in, you know, normal motion, and then we want it to go down to slow motion. So this is where the fun part kind of comes in. So I'm going to go down here, about here. Once we get over that halfway look right there, we're going to add a keyframe. And so, and then from here, we're going to do 10%. So it's going to go from 100% to 20% to 10%. We'll go ahead and get a little bit more workspace here. And looks good. Now, of course, you got to look out for certain things like the artifacting. Um, audience is going to be focused on her eyes because that's, you know, it's a good thing. She's a model. She's pretty and everything. So we're going to be focused on her eyes. But the hair is kind of what sells this effect because the hair, since we had a little bit of a breeze, it gives it that you know, nice slow motion look. But if you push it too far, it won't work because as you can see, we only shot 60 frames a second. So there's only so much information that Twixter can manipulate. So as we start to play, you'll see that it kind of starts to fade a little bit. Those, the, you know, the frames are kind of blending into each other, which Twixter is doing a great job at hiding, but you can only push it so far. In fact, if anything slower, the better. Like I'd rather go to 8% or 6% over 30% because in fact, I'll even show you why. Because if we do 30%, the effect is, you know, let's see. It's not gonna look as good. This is one of those all or nothing effects. When you use Twixter, you go like 10% or 2% or 1% or you don't use it at all. You know, you gotta, you gotta give it your all. Yeah, see that just looks bad at 30%. So let's go ahead and control Z that. Back to 10%, looks good. So the next thing that we are gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna add some sharpening to her eyes. So we're gonna go ahead and solo that. So what I did here is I just added an unsharp mask and a regular sharpen effect specifically to her eyes. Why? Because again, the eyes are the focus of this shot because without this, and I don't know if YouTube compression is killing this, but without this, it just doesn't work too well. It's, I mean, we shot this on the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, so it's a sharp lens. We shot this at 1.8. So it's a little bit soft. So we just add a little bit of sharpening. It just brings out her eyelashes and everything and um, an unsharp mask. And I may have even, you know, her eyelashes are a little too black now. So I might even bring that down to 15. But it just definitely accentuates her eyes a lot. But you have to be careful because you're also going to be bringing out the grain in this area too, which is another thing that we're going to do. We're going to do a denoiser using a Red Giant denoiser. Now this is going to be our color correction layer. So this is just a simple adjustment layer. And I added a Lumetri color to it, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on, and boom. So this is our main grade that we did, or you know, that we're doing. Um, nothing too much to say here. Really, all I did is I want to make sure her skin tones are accurate. So if you go to your vector scope Y U V, you can definitely go here. In fact, I'll make this smaller. Her um, skin tones are a little bit in the red. I can see mainly it's right here, but for the most part, it is right on the flesh tone line, which means it's good. You know, she doesn't look like Donald Trump. So it's all good. She's not too orange. So that's all that matters for me. Cause at the end of the day, as creative as, as, creative as we want to get with this shot, her skin tones need to be accurate. That's, that's just a, your job as a colorist is to make sure their skin tones are accurate because for the sake of the story it needs to be accurate. And for the sake of not getting yelled at by, <laughs> by your model, you know, you want to make sure the skin tones are good. So, and there's not much too, too much I did here. It's just add some highlights, mid-tones. I always like to bring the mid-tones down a little bit, kind of pops the skin tones a little. Shadows, I like to usually make sure that they're not kissing um, zero IRE. I like to give them a little bit of a lift, especially up in here in the dark areas. So with that said, usually go into creative and then I'll add a faded film effect and usually bring that to like eight. Now, as you can see, that completely lifts it up. We're probably at like two, three IRE is where our blacks are kissing now, which is really good because I don't want this to be completely black. It needs to be kind of angelic, nice, soft, black filmic roll off. And everything else is a bit self-explanatory. This is where you just get creative and you just do your own thing until you get the grade that you like. Now, here are the next two things that are very important, and these are with the eyes. So that is before, and then this is after. So we're gonna go ahead and go to layer, new, solid. 
And usually I just want to make it white, but you know, that works. And we'll call this dim eyes. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a classic color dodge. Now you have to be careful with the blend mode that you choose because not all blend modes are created equal and they won't all do the same thing. Hence why they're different blend modes. For example, if you add it to screen, that's not going to work. If you do multiply, it's not going to work. It does work with hard light, but classic color dodge, I find gives you the best results when you're kind of dealing with someone's eyes. So we'll go ahead and bring these down and just draw an elliptical mask or actually we'll just do an ellipse tool. So if you click in the center and then hold control shift, it'll create a perfect circle on the keyboard and then hit V and then let's go ahead and bring that down, feather it out, maybe 15%. Um, just kidding. 25% and perfect. So you can see what that's doing before, after. Now you want to be careful to not push it because that is obviously too strong. That looks like, I don't know. That looks like Legolas and the Hobbit, like CGI looking. So you want to be able to hit T, bring the opacity, You'd probably do 15. Cause again, we don't want to make her look abnormal. We just want to, you know, pop out the assets. So that looks good. Might even do 17, 18, just kidding. And I won't go over all the animation. I mean, it's fairly simple. She just opens her eyes and it's in slow motion. So you just hit M, do the mask path, bring it over and just, animate the elliptical mask and you know animate so when her eyes are closed it's completely closed and so next thing we want to do is glow the edges of the hair and glow the you know just make it look really angelic this is gold shot golden hour and this looks good you know her hair in the background looks good looks warm we're looking i'm looking at the scope um yeah my scopes and you know there's definitely a lot more reds than blues in here especially in the highlights but we want to accentuate this but we don't want to do like a optical flares or something like that, like a big old anamorphic lens flare in the middle of the shot because one, that's overdone. Two, it's, we didn't shoot this anamorphic. And three, it's just not going to look good. So we're just going to do an overall glow effect. Now we're going to do this in two ways. And I'm going to go ahead and save. So I'm going to add a layer, new, so, oh my God, layer, new, solid. And bring this a little bit to the orange, medium yellow, I guess. And we're going to make this hair glow yo g draw a mask around her hair exactly where we want the glow to be cool and we're going to do it again here awesome so that's pretty much the tutorial so anyways guys i'll talk to you guys next time thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial uh, my name is justin melson with happy fox productions and i'm just kidding uh this look this does look funny though so we're going to go ahead and feather this out a lot. We want to make this very subtle. So next thing we do is going to go to mode. I'm going to do a soft light. So it's just giving her air, her, her air, her hair, just a good amount of, um, you know, pop, nice little glow going on. So we can see what it looked like before and after. Looks good. Might even be a little too much. We could do. 55. Now the next thing and final thing that we're going to do is we're going to had, had add an overall glow effect to this entire shot, similar to what we just did, but we're just going to use the simple adjustment layer. And then we're just going to type in glow over here, add that on. And obviously we don't want to do that. So first thing I'm going to do is from glow separation, we're going to change that to add additive mode to screen mode. Instantly better change the threshold to maybe 85 and bring up the radius so let's see what we got before after before after and let's just draw a mask around her hair again definitely too much so easily we could just go hit t maybe bring this down to 75. okay I know I said it a bunch of times. These are the final two things I like to do. This isn't really necessary, but I like to do it because it makes me feel better. As you can see on our um, on our scopes right here, we are definitely clipping. We had our, we are at 100% IRE. In fact, most information over here is at 100% IRE. So I like to, it just makes me feel better knowing that things are within legal color space and color boundaries just because I do a lot of broadcast work and I've downloaded a lot of work from professional colorists. 
And I've noticed whenever I download their work, none of their information is really at 100%. Um, the same thing with their blacks. A lot of their blacks rarely are at kissing zero. Um, my blacks right here are exactly where I want them to be, but the whites are a little too white. And if you take that out of context, that's not context, that sounds a little funny. But so we're gonna do effect utility um, HDR highlight compression. And obviously that makes it look really washed out. So this effect I like to do at like 5%. And if you look on our scopes now, it just kind of compresses it a little bit. We don't want to push it too far, but for me, it just makes me feel better knowing that our whites are brought down a little bit. It's not really doing much to the shot. Nothing that's really noticeable to the eye, but it is giving us a little bit of freedom in our whites. It's essentially just giving it Getting it away from that white, harsh digital roll off to a much softer gray roll off. And that is it. And now the final, final, final thing I like to do is add some noise reduction because I mean, this shot is pretty noiseless, but in the blacks is a little bit. And again, this shot, it's we're supposed to make it like soft and glowy and fantasy looking. So that's the final thing we'll do. Control Alt Y for another adjustment layer. Going to go into Denoiser from Magic Bullet. Throw that on there. Now, this should be the last thing you do because this does eat up a lot of computing power. Uh, this is always the last thing I throw on there because if you throw it on in the beginning, you're going to have to be processing every frame of this, and it's it's not fun. So reduce noise probably by 75%. Bring that up. Sharpness, I kind of bring that back down because we've done that already. Now, on YouTube, you guys probably can't see what this is doing, but now it is definitely smooth, smoothened out her skin almost a little too much. She looks a little legless-y. So we're going to bring some preserved detail back. And, um, and this is just that half resolution, but it looks good. You know, the blacks look good. They're nice and creamy. The highlights look creamy. Her skin tones look good. So everything looks good. And so here is what the final shot looks like. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is it for this tutorial. I hope you're able to gain some insider tips and tricks on, you know, how to enhance your footage and just bring it above, get it to that next level. And I know this was done in After Effects, but you can kind of translate these effects to almost any NLE. You could have done this entire thing in Resolve if you wanted. So anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at Justin Melson. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.